What's up, everybody? <laughs> hey, Scott. Hey, Los Crucius. So you guys don't actually need to see me tonight, do you? Because this box I got is enormous. Uh, this is Grant's Comics Trust Ball box. It's huge. <laughs> and it's full of stuff. Uh, and included in that stuff, I think, are packing peanuts. Because Grant is truly the devil. So, all right. Anyways. I'm going to knock everything over, get that out of the way, and then pull stuff out of it from the ground because, yeah. Um, there we go. I've already destroyed my valuable studio. So this video is off to a roaring start. What's up, Pat? What's up, DJ? All right. So, yeah. Grant Comics, Trust Fall Box. There's Packing Peanuts. There's this box, which is heavy as all sin, and I'm pretty sure full of comics. So we're going to start there. There's more stuff down here. We'll get to it. This might be a long video, but I'm going to try and uh, go through this as fast as sort of possible. Don, Slim, slot it up. Welcome. All right. Oh, backing board. Sweet. Uh, all right. Stickers. I don't know what you guys do with these things. These all end up on my long boxes, so I have long boxes full of stickers. But there's that. Um, and a letter from from the man. So, uh, okay. What lunatic would pay that much for mystery box? I'm going to paraphrase this. It's his most expensive box. Um, he's earned the trust of the community with pretty positive boxes. And so he's done this one, which is the biggest, highest price box. So there's that. I'm not going to read all that because <laughs> we're looking at a stack of crap already. Um, starting with... A reproduction of 1978's How to Draw Batman booklet by Sheldon Meyer, who uh, created this to debate the idea of using continuity in comics. So, there you go. Now I can learn how to draw Batman, which is kind of always hard. Oh, and... <laughs> all right. This is pretty sweet. I think he's included some of these in almost all the boxes. So, spoiler, everybody. What's up, Jamie? Rick? Uh... Yeah, this is a the showcase presents the Doom Patrol, and I love the Doom Patrol. There it says, wacky, wild, crazy. So <laughs> that's part of the heaviness of this box. And uh, let's dig in and see what else we have. All right, a recreation, not a Marvel milestone, but same idea of uh, Luke Cage, Power Man number one. Not bad. Uh, oh yeah, okay, another cool character. 2018 featuring Judge Dredd. And uh, Eagle Comics is the first American publisher for the Judge Dredd series, picking up the title in 1983. He puts these little notes on things when they're relevant, and that's kind of cool. So then I can act like I know what I'm doing, sort of. All right, what else we got? <laughs> All right, The Flash, uh, guest starring Nightwing, in a very tortured looking face and a baby. So I'm pretty sure Flash stole a baby. That's, that's what I get out of that. <laughs> All right. New Universe uh, Psy Force. Okay, the New Universe is something Marvel tried that didn't really go well. I think Starbrand came from that. That's the only kind of surviving thing that I believe. Um, yeah, otherwise it was like a world without mutants and trying to hold, have whole new powers. I can't remember who the editor was for it because I don't care. It wasn't very good. Uh you know, but all right. Web of Spider-Man number 73. All right. Um, don't have this one. There's a guy missing his head and shooting arrows at people. So that's sure to be some sweet freaking quality. Um, oh, cool. All right. I'll stop saying all right between every book. Maybe. Maybe not. What's up, Gary? What's up, my three lines? What's up, everybody? The Shadow number four. I don't think I have this one. It's kind of hard to tell because a lot of the books, a lot of the shadow books have the shadow kind of lurking over something, being, as it were, shadowy. So, who knows? I'll have to dig into that. Um, keep, keep it going. Midnight Suns. Okay, this is, I don't, I can pretend I know what this is, but I really don't know. It looks like a John Romita Jr. drawing, almost. Might have been. Uh, is it? It is. Hey, I knew the artist at least. So that's, I think, when Marvel is getting gritty and everything had chains. There's chains somewhere on there on the, on the Ghost Rider. 
All right, this is a thicker book. What do we got here? Amazing Spider-Man something. Uh, number 800. Oh, sweet. Uh, Variant cover by Humberto, Humberto Ramos. Ramos? Whatever. Names are hard. Uh, yeah, I have this, but not this variant, so that's kind of cool. And, guys, we still have about this much. Oh, my God, this much left in this box. So I'm going to try and make it as entertaining as possible by pulling out the books upside down. Uh, Punisher, 42. Uh, okay. Oh, oh, the Punisher. What do I care? My kid is dead already. He's such a lighthearted chap. He's a fan favorite. I never really cared for him that much, but, you know, teach your own. I like the, uh, the, the, the Netflix series, actually, the first season. I didn't watch the second, but I thought, what's his face from Walking Dead? But it was a good Punisher. All right, Star Hunters, number one. I think everybody I've seen has gotten this box, this book. Which means it's probably worth about the 35 cents it was back when it came. But uh, I dig it. I'm a fan of cheesy old sci-fi and, and retro retro futuri futuristic sci-fi stuff. Uh, oh, Daredevil 275. Daredevil, uh, Marvel's first Daredevil series ran for three. Yeah, so like, I think, honestly, he's, he's shorthanding this a little bit because I've seen this on somebody else's book, too. So I think everybody got a, a Daredevil book, which I really don't blame him. Uh, Daredevil's awesome. I, I love Daredevil. And then it's another John Romita Jr. cover, uh, and he's fighting Ultron, which is not typical for, for the Daredevils, as it were. Oh, and from Daredevil, hang on, I'm seeing a transition here, to Blue Devil. Eh? Eh? Blue Devil. Character I don't know a whole lot about, honestly, but looks like he's fighting all of the Flash's rogues gallery. There's Heat Wave, Trickster, Cap Captain Boomerang, Captain Cold, the Golden Glider, the Pied Piper, the Wizard... The weather wizard words are hard, folks. And Gorilla Grodd. So, yeah. Blue Devil, I don't really know. Um, I mean, I know he exists or doesn't. Well, okay, none of these characters actually exist. Sorry. There's no Santa Claus either. But he's not, not on my radar as far as DC stuff. All right. Countdown Mystery. Dr. Fate. And Eclipse of. Nice. Um, I need to learn more about, like, getting more into Dr. Fate. I kind of like him as a, a character, too. I like the magical folks. Uh, except for Dr. Fate, they made him all gritty in the 90s and, like, turned his helmet into, like, throwing star onks. And uh, I don't it was It was bad. I mean, the 90s in comics was – the 90s was not great for comics at, at all, or at least, you know, quality, in my humble opinion. So, all right, Spectacular Spider-Man, number 175. All right. I, I'm always happy to have uh, issues of, of uh, Spectacular and, and Web and, you know, all those things. Uh, New Mutants, uh, Bill Sankovich cover, I can tell you that much. Um, all right, yeah. Um, new, who would have thought that here in September, see, we're in September, I'm opening this in a present. The New Mutants would be battling Sonic the Hedgehog for a highest grossing movie of 2020. So, there you go. I don't think this is a key issue, uh, but it's a cool cover. I like Bill Sankovich quite a bit. Or Sid Cabbage? Sid Cabbage. Yeah. Ooh, Deathlock. Um, another uh, kind of dark and gritty Marvel character. Guy who was basically, what, dead and rotting, and kind of they, they reanimated him. is how it originally was, I think. And then uh, the, the Shield kind of changed it on the TV series and stuff. Uh, there was a series that Jackson Geisen illustrated that I really liked that had him... Uh, and then other illustrators took over that I didn't care for as much back in the day. But, you know, whatever. Uh, Black and White Batman Superman, I think. What's up, Eternal? Uh, yeah, Batman Superman number 28. Ooh, the adult coloring book variant cover. That's kind of cool. And I'm not going to cover the color of this because, well, you know, you have to keep your toys wrapped up to keep them safe. The same with these books. You can't actually do what you want with them. You can't read them or color on them. Then they're not worth the, the $9 they'd be on eBay. So... Uh, all right, Green Arrow. Okay, Rebirth number six. Yeah, Green Arrow. Uh, especially, I wanted to care. I really did. I kind of liked the Mike Grell uh, longbow hunter back in the, the old days. But otherwise, yeah, he's, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Chubby, keep it wrapped up to be safe. You're right. That's, that's, that's what she said. So, being on time is hard. Lots of things are hard. Oh, all right, nice. Batman White Knight. I've not read this. I've heard really good things about this. Sean Murphy. Um, yeah, I like the cover. It's not, you know, negative space cover, but I, I enjoy the I enjoy the Mr. Freeze lurking in the background, being freezy. Oh, yeah, there we go. 
That's that either late 80s, early 90s goodness right there. 296, X-Men, part nine, Executioner song. Um, is that Jim Lee on the cover? No, it's not Jim Lee. It's uh, Peterson and Austin. This is like kind of when Jim Lee, like the, the cracks were starting to form in the Marvel and all those guys that went on to form image stuff. This is right, right around then. So. Ooh, Contagion. I like the cover. Uh, very covered by Ryan Brown. Yeah, all right. There you go. Very covered by Ryan Brown. See, I know comics. And not just because I'm reading tags. All right, that's we're getting there. Uh, Four thousand one eighty. Uh, is this Rye? I'm guessing. One of the Clan Barry by Clayton Crane. That's kind of nice. Um, character design by Clayton Crane. Ooh, there you go. I think this might be the hit of the box so far. Clayton Crane is hot. I mean, he is. He's an attractive man. Long hair, you know. But also his comics are hot right now. He's the flavor of the year, other than Peach Momoko. So, all right, Web of Spider Man. Uh, what, what, let's see here. Absolute Carnage, Symbiote Spider Man number one. All right, I do not have this one either. Uh, Peter David. Yeah, I, I. Okay, Peter David's hit or miss for me. I liked his run in the Hulk back in the day. I don't care about his run in Maestro now. Uh, some of the other stuff he did. Eh. I liked his X Factor. I mean, it was cheesy. It was. Uh, it was what it was, but I like the strong guy and his wacky cast of characters on that, that run that he did. So JSA, I like the JSA covers. These aren't worth a damn thing, I don't think. But, it, yeah, it's Alex Ross, and none of his stuff, for whatever reason, and I was watching this on somebody else's, on the, on the, 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 some of the New York Guy channel. And Alex Ross's covers just don't tend to be worth a lot, for whatever reason. They're gorgeous, but, like, you know, and I like them. And I, I'm, I like the old Green Lantern costume and that, but they just don't tend to hold, like, they're not... They're not variant value. So, Crane is hot, see? Yeah, there you go, Chubby. All right, uh, Justice League America, 77. Um, I don't think J Dan Jurgens. Jurgens? Is it Jurgens? Jurgens? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Or don't. I, I, I don't honestly care about that one. So, ooh, all right. We're getting there. Uh, Batman Brotherhood of the Bat. All right, there's a lot of, a lot of Batman as it twere. Wonder if that oh, was an Elseworld tale. Sweet, uh, square bound, good shape. All these books are in pretty decent shape, uh, which I, I I will say. And Grant, I do I do know he puts a lot of effort into like curating this stuff. I I might take a break for his next box. And there's nothing against him. I, and, I, and I'm sure I have value in here. Uh, I think it was like 140 ship. I think I'm not sure, but uh, it's been a while. This box has been taking up space for a while. Gotham Knights too. All right. Is that nope? Okay. Uh, I'm just to the point now where if I'm if I'm doing mystery boxes, I kind of I don't want 40 books. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I, I like these 40 books, but um, I, I just want the chance at like getting some really nice big old prizes and stuff. So uh, I've got way too many long boxes full of stuff already right uh, right now. So I don't know. What are your thoughts? Like when, when you're looking for mystery boxes, do you look for uh, volume or value or do you just not do them or you know whatever? That you can actually leave me a comment. I'll read those. I mean, I read all your comments. I love all of you. I read all of them. Ghostbusters. 101, number five. IDW. Where are they? they did a weird thing. Like Ghostbusters comics always went weirdly cartoony, which I get. I mean, it was kind of a cartoony 80s action movie, but like, I don't know. I would have, I would have liked to see like a more sort of realistically drawn Ghostbusters series at some point. So prizes are nice. Uh, yeah, I'm going back to Torpedo, Chubby. That's what I'm saying. Oh, God. Uh, uh, Brickleberry Armageddon, part one, issue one from Dynamite. There we go. I take it back. That's the hit of the box. <laughs> All right. Still going. Hellbreak, number one. These are where I think he's just throwing – yeah, Torpedo's awful. Uh, yeah. It's like it is. It does never end. Also – Eternal, what in the hell is a tickle trunk? Actually, I, I, I never mind. I don't want to know. Uh, um, Hellbreak by Colin Bunn and uh, Trilla. And, all right. This one I'd probably like to read. I like Colin Bunn stuff normally. Not his new Cyberpunk 27. Some, I think the trauma team that looked as hot garbage, but this I'll give it a whirl. So. Uh, oh, Adventure Time presents Marceline and the Scream Queens, number two of six. 
Well, I'm gonna be lost because I don't have number one. Thanks, Grant. Christmas is ruined. All right, still going. I mean, I, I'm just trying to not to have all these books fall over in front of me while I'm pulling things from the box. Oh, nice. All right. Um, Walt Disney's Comics and Stories 404 from May of 1974. This has some spine ticks and stuff, but it's a nice red cover. It's in pretty decent shape. And that's not bad. That's actually, this actually, I'm taking back what I said earlier. Whatever I said, said was the hit of the box is not. This is now the hit of the box. The hits of the box keep shifting. <laughs> oh, well, nope, I take that back. The Batmite, number one. <laughs> Not really, but uh, Batmite's first appearance had something else in it. I, I can't remember. Was it the first Batmobile? Or there was, like, his first appearance also, or that might have, I don't know, might have been Ra's al Ghul. There's some other first appearance that shows up in the same first issue he does, and it's a very weird combo. Um, all right. Yeah, I'm just going to let you guys figure out what the hell a tickle trunk is from Mr. Dress of Kid Show. All right. That, uh, everything, you, everything you just typed, Eternal, scares the crap out of me. Uh, oh, Silvery. Doug Mensch. Uh, Batman number zero, the beginning of tomorrow. That's deep. Cool cover, too. Uh, we're getting towards the bottom, amazingly enough. All right. What do you got here? Nice. Okay. Um, nice celebrated Superman. Neil Adams cover. April of 73. 73 is my birth year, not my birth month. My birthday is actually on Thursday. I, I, I'm going to probably record a video. Maybe. We'll see. I might just drink. Uh, the Man of Molten Steel. That's kind of nice, too. So there's definitely some filler in this box, but there's some cool, enough cool hits, I think, that is pretty decent. Um, all right. Young Justice number six. First team appearance of an evil Young Justice from Earth 3. So... There you have it. That is the bottom of this, and that is not the end of Grant's Mystery Box. So it keeps going. Um, let me see what else is in here. I think, yeah, okay. So there's a slab, and there's also something else beneath it. So I'm going to pull up the slab first. Um, oh, nice. Okay. So, okay, yeah. This actually does make it pretty decent. It's a Detective Comics 1000, uh, the Jay Anacleto variant. Uh, Ancelotto, and it's, I think it's Anacleto. Again, names are hard. People should all just be named Smith. They call it easy. Uh, first appearance of the Arkham Knight in continuity. So, that is a cool cover, too. I'm not I'm not hating this box. I mean, it is a trick box to no bottom. What else we got in here? Definitely packing peanuts. I'm not pulling those all out. And what do you have? What is this? Okay. So, this is the last thing in the box. And this is super cool. So, okay. So one of the things um, Grant did was he asked what uh, to name, like, three of our top favorite superheroes and stuff. And so I said, well, I'm assuming you want bigger names. So I said Batman and, you know, a couple others. And he's like, yeah, well, what if you had smaller ones? What would you pick? I'm like, well, I like Moon Knight and Mr. Miracle and, you know, John Constantine. And I just named off a bunch. So here... This is a reproduction. I'm sure it's not the original cover. Because the original cover, I think, is thousands of dollars, and it is. It's a. It's not. I mean, it's a. It's a copy of it. But this is still pretty cool. It's a. What issue is this? I okay. I don't know the issue number, and I don't know if it's actually signed by Sienkiewicz. I don't think so, because that would be. I mean, either way, either way, this is still pretty fantastic. It's framed up. I'm keeping this. This is good. Getting hung up somewhere in my house. Um. So there we go. That is the bottom of Grant's trust fall box. So he asked us to trust him, and I'm happy with the results. I, I, I really am. I think <laughs> I think it's well worth it. And yeah, Moodite is dope. Uh, I agree. And so that's a cool grand finale to this whole thing. Between the slab and the four or five like kind of key books, and like again, the filler books are not not awful, but yeah, they're. Uh, I think I definitely have my money's worth. And, uh, yeah, so if anyone else is looking for interesting boxes, they're always interesting. He always has a theme. Like, the, the, the last one I did before this was Back to School, and all the books came in a backpack. You can go watch that video. And, you know, he puts a lot of thought into it, and, and I do think he gave him money. That is worth it. You don't get, I, I don't believe, a chance at huge grand prizes, which – that's that's not awful. Always a bad thing. I, I, I think you'd have to get your money's worth. There's some boxes where they're like, oh, we can't promise a grand prize, but we guarantee you get your money's worth. And it's just like, 
they go by current prices on eBay and you never really actually get your money's worth. And then you just kind of, you just kind of left a little bit of bad taste in your mouth. I don't have a bad taste in my mouth in this. This is a lot of fun. There's a huge amount of variety in this thing. And uh, yeah, I, I probably will do another one of his in the future. I just have a stack of mystery boxes to open like this. And so I need to slow down a little bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> and thanks. Uh, yeah. Everybody for showing up. Um, what time is it? 10 to 8. I am going to probably cut this one short fairly soon because Chubby Pop Chaser, who is in the chat, uh, is uh, opening a V13 box at, at 8 o'clock, I believe, unless you've already done it and I missed it. But I don't want to miss that one because I haven't gotten mine yet. So I'm on, I want all the spoilers to see what all the big hits everybody else got. And so when I get my 10 variant covers, I'm just going to weep softly and, uh, you know, call it a day. But <laughs> thank you for showing up, guys. Have a good night. I appreciate it. Uh, keep an eye out. I'm getting real close to 400 followers, so 9 p.m. Eastern. Okay, here we go. I can't do I can't do conversion to Eastern. Do it in Central Time. This is America's country. We're in the Midwest right now. Cheese, rolling plains, no earthquakes, that kind of thing. Man, <laughs> three, two in the morning there. Oh boy, dude. I kind of want to go to London sometime, or you know, yeah, but. We're not allowed to travel anywhere because the U.S. is a hot, rolling mess of COVID. Oops, I can't say that they're not going to monetize me. The U.S. is a fantastic place with no faults at all. It's the perfect country. You all should come here. Except you can't either because travel bans. I don't know why they exist, but for some reason, they're in place right now. All right, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, go watch Chubby's channel. Subscribe to him. Get his view hours up. He needs view hours so he can monetize. So just go watch all his views. Watch all his stuff on repeat. He's a funny guy, super nice guy. So just get him up to this 4,000 hours. That's right. YouTube requires 4,000 hours. So you have to sit and stare blankly at the screen for that long so we can all run a six-second ad and make $4 a month. That's that's part of my grand life plan, by the way. So just know what you're in for. You're going to just be, see a lot of ads for manscaping. And um, what other ads are always run here? I don't know. Political ads right now, which make me want to vomit. So... Thanks, guys. Appreciate you showing up. That's enough rambling on my part. Uh, Ope is the Midwest version of saying excuse me. So you can find it on my shop if you want, taylorwinder.com. And as always, don't be a dick. See ya.